morning, sir. The market's a little better. Good morning. Well, carbide is up a little. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Ralston. Morning, Mr. Austin. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Austin. Good morning, T.T. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Mr. Austin. Good morning, Mr. Austin. Oh, uh, T.T. Hey, what is everybody smiling about? What's so funny? Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Austin. Mr. Austin. Oh, nonsense. Hiya, Chief. Good morning. <clears throat> Dick, I've got distressing news. Uh, boy, come back later. What's that? Hey, go, run along, run along. Hey, he's only done one shoe. Dick, we've got to get rid of Las Lomas Quicksilver as soon as possible. Oh, I've got cauliflower ears from phoning. Just got as far as quick and they hang up. Listen, I got $150,000 sunk in that blasted mine. We got to get it out. Oh, but T.T. Uh, look, drop everything else today. After all, this is my baby. Well, of all the babies we've had in this office, this one's really got circles under its eyes. Mr. Van Dusen is here. Hello. Shall... Oh, hello, Van. Hiya. Good morning, T.T. Good morning. Conference? No, no, not at all. Make yourself at home. Do you have a cigarette? Oh, no, thanks. Did you see what car I did? Yes, sir. You certainly call that right. <laughs> Van, you have plenty of nice, solid stuff. Now, I've got something really exciting for you. Something that you can play with. Yes? Yeah. Will you have a drink? Oh, it's a little early. Uh, this happens to be my own little pet. I got hold of a mine in New Mexico quite by accident. Las Lomas Quicksilver. <laughs> I'll take a bottle of pop. I don't care what you've heard. It's great stuff. Hello? Yes? Who? Oh, put him on. Put him on. Uh, hello, Bennett. Yes? Ah, that's good news, Steve. Yes. Come as soon as you can. Uh, oh, all right. Make it after lunch. That's fine, boy. Goodbye. That was young Bennett, Steve Bennett. He's consented. He's coming into the firm. I asked him last night. A fine choice. He just cracked up in his own business. Oh, I've had my eye on Steve for a long time. He's going to be all right. He's a little conservative, needs guidance, but he has good contacts. You could put all his customers under a cookie jar. But those he has speak very highly of him. When we take Bennett in, we'll take in his customers. He's just the man we need right now. Hi-ho, Quicksilver. Why not? He'll sell it. He won't spend his life sitting in that chair. You see, he's not married to my daughter. Well, you boys go right ahead with your little family quarrel. I'll go and see if I've been wiped out. Yes, sir, Sam, I'm really falling into something. No more worries, no responsibilities, no ulcers. People beg for that Ralston stock. All I'll have to do is come in in the morning, put my feet up on the desk, rock back and go to sleep. Every once in a while, the door opens, a customer tiptoes in, takes the stock off the desk, leaves the check, and tiptoes out. Yeah, but who's gonna get up and open the door for him? I don't know, but they're not gonna make a drudge out of me. What are you keeping all these pictures from the old office for? They're awful heavy on my lap. Well, what's the use of going to college if you don't keep the pictures? Who are these fellas with just big spoons or something? Sp Those are oars. That's my rowing team, intercollegiate champs, 29, 30, and 32. But what happened to 31? The judges found out where we hid the outboard motor. Snoops. Say, this is the office for me. The Taj Mahal with ink wells. Taj Mahal? How do you do? I'm Mr. Bennett. Oh, yes, how do you do, Mr. Bennett? We've been expecting you. Mr. Bennett is here, Mr. Ralston. They ain't using pictures. Hello, Steve. Hello, T.T. Am I late? No, no, it's mighty good to have you with us. Well, it's mighty good to be here, too, T.T. Uh, uh, T.T.? <laughs> Come on, Steve, I'll show you your office. Okay. I wish these pictures would carry me for a while. <laughs> you don't know how happy I am. We're going to do great things together. Now, as soon as you get settled and comfortable, give me a buzz. Just got hold of something you'll be crazy about. The sweetest little issue. Oh, that mellow, easy stuff to handle? Yeah. That honey <laughs> from orchids? <laughs> Mr. Wilson, yes. New Mexico is on the phone. Hey, I'll tell you about it later. Give me a buzz. All right, T.T. Great fella. My name goes right there, in chromium. Well, here we... Oh, I'm sure this is only temporary. That's feeding our git. No, I mean the office. Still, this must be my office. It's too small for a telephone booth. <laughs> Don't do that! Gives me that buried alive feeling. Hey, 
what am I brooding about? This is only my outer office. Ah. I could really do things in an office like this. Stockbrokers are always backing shows, being angels. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. Stevie, I've... come on in. Come on in, pal. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, honey, uh, Miss Graham, I want you to meet Mr. Bennett, one of my partners. Partner? Well, Mr. Donnelly's been promising we'd get together for some time. Oh, he has. Well, that's very nice. How do you do? When Dick Donnelly tells you'll meet someone, you meet him. We've been uh, talking about the green swan. The green? Yes, didn't Dickie tell you about the green swan? Oh, should he? I, I mean, do you think I'm old enough to know? <laughs> her show, Stevie, her show. The one Linda's going to star in. You know, I told you all about it. He loved it. Oh, oh, the swan, yes, that part where you come on with the thing. <laughs> and that fellow ran with the McGill. Oh, I thought I'd die laughing. <laughs> It's supposed to be a serious drama. Yes, well, so long. <laughs> oh, tell me, Mr. Bennett, uh, did you uh, like it well enough to put any money into it? Huh? Did he like it well enough to want to put 15 grand in it? Oh. I must have been crazy about it. Oh, well, Mr. I... Bennett, how can I thank you? You won't regret it. Really, you won't. We'll give Broadway something really fine this season. Yeah, lucky Broadway. Oh, well, I'd better go. It's a customer. They get very impatient, so I uh, might hurt his head. <laughs> well, you take it. <laughs> well, goodbye. But, Mr. Bennett. Hey, Samuel, get some bricks and mortar. We're going to seal up this door. In the meantime, put a rat trap there. Well, the portal brought. Oh, they brought the things, huh? That's good. I want to get that list of my customers. Ah, oh, there it is. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello, Betty. Hello, Miss Saunders. Say, I like your hair that way. Oh, thank you, Miss Saunders. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Oh, Miss Saunders. I want to thank you for sending those books to Freddie. <laughs> but I'm, I'm afraid they're a little old for him. Oh? oh well, he'll grow into them. Here, sir. Oh, hello. Hello. Tell Uncle Pudgy, Mr. Ralston, that I have to see him right away. It's really important. Certainly, Miss Saunders. How have you been? Just fine. Mr. Ralston, your niece is here to see you. Uh-oh. Uh, did you tell her I was in? Yes, she's right here. Well, tell her the office is full of people. Well, he's awfully sorry, but the office is full of people. Oh, it is, hmm? Well, try Mr. Donnelly. Mr. Donnelly? Miss Saunders is here. Shall I send her in? No, no, no. T tell her I just jumped out the window. Tell her anything, anything. Gwen is out there. I know. What are you doing? I forgot to plug up one leak in the dike. Hello, J.P. J.P. Carter, please. Hello, J.P. This is T.T. Say, has my niece Gwen been there to see you? Oh, she hasn't. Good. Uh, Joe, she's mixed up in another charity scheme. Uh, listen, Joe, in a weak moment, I promised to double it if she could raise 20000 or more by the first of the month. A handsome offer with the first of the month tomorrow. Now, when she gets to you, you just uh, tell her you can't donate anything at present. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've told all the other fellows. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, uh, by the way, Joe, uh, I've got to show my gratitude in some way. Ever hear of Las Lomas Quicksilver? Hello, Joe. Joe! <laughs> Bad connection. I don't think I'll wait any longer, Hilda. Well, maybe you'd like to see the new partner. Oh, uh, Mr. Bennett, is he here already? Yes, he's in his office. What's he like? Well, he's uh, kind of hard to describe. I know the type. Yes, Mr. Hendricks. No, no regrets about my own business. Those nerve-wracking days are over. Yes, sir, I'll call you the minute I get something good. Hello. I've got something. Goodbye. I'm Gwen Saunders. Well, how do you do? I'm Beeb Stennett. I mean, I'm Stan Beaver. I mean, uh, Bennett. Bennett, yeah, that's him. No, that's me. I want you to sit down. Could I talk to you alone for a minute? Alone? Alone, Sam. You don't have to hit me with no turn of coal. No, I guess it's too late for that. You just fade with me. Yes, ma'am. I'll put the pictures up. He painted the boat. Sam. 
Well, I hope you don't mind. Huh? Shh, we better not talk too loud. No, we better not. Mr. Bennett, I'm in trouble. Trouble? I only know you by reputation. My uncle's talked about you so much, but I want you to know that I trust you implicitly. Well, that's very nice. I'm sorry to be so abrupt. After all, we're strangers, but you're the only one in the world that can help me. Well, I'm entirely at your service. Well, it's terribly, terribly important. But you must promise me that you won't say a word about it to anyone. Oh, I won't tell a... Su say, you're not in a play called The Green Swan, are you? Shh. Huh? Gosh, Pudgy and Dick mustn't know that I've talked to you. Huh? Pudgy's my nickname for uncle. There isn't anyone in the world I can ask except Van, and he wouldn't do it. Oh, he wouldn't, eh? That's just like him. Who is he? Never mind. They mustn't dream we're going to be partners. Oh, we're going to be partners? Yes. Now, do you see these? Is that money? Yes. What do you think it was? Why, that's a thousand dollar bill. There's ten of them. One, two, three, four. Oh, don't five. count. We're partners. <laughs> yeah, we're just. Oh, oh. Was... Dear me. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> you see, I'm so upset. I don't know what I'm doing. I've had these for four days. Pudgy doesn't know that I've got them. Here, you keep them. I've had them in two banks, in my safe deposit box, under my pillow, and in my stocking. <laughs> Oh, aren't you afraid of prowlers? What? Uh, I, I mean, it's dangerous. Uh, so, naturally, I'm terribly, terribly worried. Well, how can you worry when, when you have $10,000? Oh, but that's the whole thing. I want you to invest it for me. Oh, I see. You want the firm to invest it. No, no. I told you the others mustn't know anything about it. Oh, no. You see, I have to make a lot of money quickly, and I think speculation's the best way, don't you? Well, well I, I want a quick turnover, the kind of Pudgy always gets. Pudgy's yeah, well, my nickname for Uncle. Oh, I told you that, didn't I? Well, Pudgy always doubles everybody's money. He says I talk too quickly. Oh, well, it's not noticeable. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Uh, Where's the money? Well, uh, oh, here, here. Don't get nervous. Oh. You keep it. I'm always losing it. Well, that's an awful lot of money to carry around. I seldom do it. I, I don't like to muss it or bend it. Well, which pocket are you going to keep it in? Well, I think it would look well right in there, don't you? Oh, you're a scream. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you mustn't mix it with your money. No, I won't. If it gets mixed with my money, I'll recognize it. <laughs> oh, that's well, the buzzer. Oh, yeah, that's that. Oh, Steve, can you come in now? That's Pudgy. Can I come in? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll be right there, Pudgy. Uh, T.T. I Say, so you better go. Huh? I better go. Pudgy mustn't see us together. No, oh, you've been terribly sweet, and I'm terribly, terribly grateful to you. <laughs> yes, well, well, that'd be... Oh, yeah. oh, wait, Miss Saunders, what sort of a turnover do you expect? Well, you must double it. Oh, well, I told you that, didn't I? Well, that's terribly important. That's the whole idea. It's such a good cause. Yes, it is. Uh, double it? Yes, like Pudgy always does. Oh, yes, but I mean, how much? Uh, how soon? If... Oh, well, you mustn't waste time. Well, right away, we've only got three days. I'll keep in touch with you. Goodbye. Yeah, uh, Miss Saunders. Shh. Goodbye. Yeah, because... Yeah. Hi. Dream girl. Man. Where have you been? Miss Saunders. I've been phoning you all day. Well, that trip certainly did you good. You look wonderful yourself. Do I? Oh, Steve. Come into my office, will you? We can talk in there. Oh, yes. Oh, Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bennett, I need two dollars. I've got to go get some things. Well, I don't have any money right now. You know how things are. I don't know why. Oh, I just got it. It's not mine. I, I was sitting there. I don't have to explain things to you. And don't stare. Don't oh, come in. Steve, I want you to meet Dick Donnelly. Well, I... Oh, haven't we, uh... Glad to have you with us, Bennett. Yeah, but... Oh, yes, yes, thanks. Thanks, pal, you're okay. Uh, drink? I think I will. Titi? Thank you. Well, here's to the three musketeers. Yes, sir. I'm sure we'll be together for a long time. Steve, you're going to be here until you're old and gray. Which may be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve, we're having a few friends on the Flamingo for the weekend. Uh, that's my houseboat, you know. Uh, Mrs. Ralston and I would be delighted to have you. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot, T.T. Oh, not at all, not at all. You're one of the family now, you know. <laughs> Come here. When you hear what I've got set up for you, you'll jump for joy. There's a little mine in New Mexico. You see, I was the only one to hear about it. So when I went down there to... Say, are you listening to me? Oh, yes, Pudgy. I, I mean, Mr. Ralston. <laughs> I'm all ears. Well, I'm putting it out in 70,000 shares. Preferred stock. 
It's a shame to let the public have it. Well, it certainly is. But, when <laughs> I... but we need working capital. Yes, well, what kind of a mine is it, T.T.? Well, it's Las Lomas Quicksilver Preferred. Las Lomas Quicksilver? Uh-huh. That was the quietest jumping for joy I ever saw. Oh, well, Mr. Ralston, maybe I ought to handle something I'm more familiar with, like American Can or something. Why, Steve. Hello. Hello, Bart. Come in, come in. You know Mr. Bennett. Oh, very well. Congratulations, Mr. Bennett. Oh, thanks, Mr. Pritchard. You got a good man, T.T. <laughs> oh, I know it. Mr. Pritchard took 5,000 of that Quicksilver. Uh, that's what I came to see you about, T.T. Uh, pardon me. I, uh... I think I was a little hasty. I'd like to... Uh... Oh, nonsense. You'll double your money. Well, I've been talking to some of the boys, and I'm a little jittery. Just come with me. I'll tell you what we'll do. Here's your check, Bart. If it'll make you feel any better. Well, T.T., I didn't oh, mean to... forget it, forget it. How's Ruthie and the kids? Well... We must have dinner together some night soon, eh? Well, so long, Bart. But, T.T., I don't get it. That was awful fast. Oh, I know human nature, boys. Richard will phone right back, and instead of 5,000 shares, he'll want to buy 20,000. He'll figure, if I was that anxious to give him back his money and hold on to the stock, it must be terrific. Oh, yes, boys. I'm a great student of human nature. Well, I wish I were. <laughs> I'm still in the chasing and proposing stage. Gwen? Gwen? Yes. No, Van, you haven't met uh, Steve Bennett, have you? And Tommy Van Dusen. Yes, I saw them. I mean, him, outside by the water cooler. I mean, how are you? We'd better get down to business. All right, Steve, let's get back to Quicksilver. I tell you, it'll double anybody's investment. Well, what is the set? Double? It'll double? Yeah. Well, I have a little money that... Uh... Your own money? No, no, this isn't for you, Steve. Oh, but you just said, you just told Mr. Pritchard but that... Mr. Pritchard is a customer. Yeah, but if it's not good for me, it's not good for him. Now, look, we're wasting a lot of time here. Do you or don't you want to sell this stock? Well, the customers I have believe in me. I'm not kidding, they do. I, I can't sell them anything I don't believe in. Has Ripley heard about him? All right. Maybe Las Lomas is no good at all. But there's Quicksilver somewhere in New Mexico, and somebody is liable to find it. I've told many a lie that I've had come true. A lie is the same as the truth if the result is all right. I'm afraid I disagree with you. Take a page from the old master. Profit's the only thing in business. And in our business, profit is imagination. And imagination is seldom the truth. It's what you hope for. The world doesn't believe in the truth. It didn't believe that there was an America for Columbus to discover. It didn't believe that Bell had a telephone or that man could fly. Those fellows were all telling the truth, and yet everybody considered them crazy. I tell you, there are certain necessary lies. A man can get along just as well by telling the absolute truth. You mean about everything? Yes. All the time? Sure. Hey, what are you playing? Truth and consequences? <laughs> just teaching our new partner the facts of life. Oh. We've been trying to convince Steve that he couldn't tell the truth even for a day and retain any of his friends or do any business. Why, if a man set out to tell the truth for a whole day before nightfall, someone would kill him. Sure. Well, all the diplomats of Europe would have to quit if it weren't the case. Is that bad? Listen, Steve. You meet Smith on the street in the morning, and you say, I hope you slept well. That's a lie. You don't give a hang if he never sleeps. Well, I do. Smith's a nice guy. Oh, give in, Bennett. The truth hurts. An attractive lie sounds infinitely better. Well, I'm entitled to my own opinion. I still think you can tell the truth. Who, me? No, I didn't say you could tell the truth. I said I can tell the truth. Uh, but for how long? Well, if I can tell the truth for an hour, I don't see any reason why I couldn't tell it for one day or a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't really believe that, do you? Well, I certainly do. It's just a simple matter of principle. Hey, do I sound stuffy? You wouldn't like to back those principles with a little money, would you? Well, yes, I would. Well, I would, but... Uh, yeah, look at him. Look at him, Wells. Look at him, Wells. I'll bet you any amount that you couldn't even tell the truth for 24 hours, let alone a whole year. Count me in. That's a sure thing. Well, that sounds like a quick turnover. Well, I don't know. You better think fast, buddy. Be a plunge. You bet the whole 50 cents. Don't heckle him. He's nervous. You'll bet me money, real money, that I can't tell the truth for 24 hours? That's what I said. Any mistakes. You don't hear him naming it, Hey, if he did it, I can. It's a bet. Oh, the old was right. How much? <laughs> well, I'll bet you. How much? $10,000. How much? You're bluffing. Where's the money? Bluffing. 
There. Hey, it's real. $10,000. Easy, fellas. Hey. That's tender stuff. Where did you ever get such an amount to throw away like this? Well, it's there, isn't it? And I'm not throwing it away. I'm going to win. You'll tell the truth to everybody, no matter what they ask you? Yes. I'll bet you 10000 on those terms. I'll bet you five grand. Well, I only want to bet 10000 today. Now, wait. I've got to have some of this. Hey, he's not your partner. He's ours. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute boys. I hired him. He's all mine. Why should I give up a sure thing? Do you blame me? No. Yes. I'm a client. You've got to let me in on all sound investments. Me too. All right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll split it three ways. If you win, if you tell a lie while you're away from us, you must confess. What do you mean, away from us? I'm going to sleep with him. That's not part of the agreement. Man, I'll take your share out of our cash and charge it to your account. Right. Well, what's holding us up, fellas? The sooner we get started, the sooner I get the money. And we better put this in writing. I am. You agree to tell the unadulterated truth for 24 hours. To all covers, animal, vegetable, or mineral. You'll answer all questions. If you refuse, you lose the bet. That's it, brother. You can't run away and hide. Or shut yourself up or you won't see anyone. Ah, oh, we'll be with him till he loses. And you mustn't change your routine. You must go on in the even tenor of your way. Yeah. Yes. And spell tenor with a capital T. And if anyone tells of the bet or even hints of it, that side loses the bet. One lose, all lose on your side. What's the idea of that? Well, if you told people about it, they'd ask me a lot of questions, like, well, which they ordinarily wouldn't. Oh, put it in, put it in, and let him put his picture in if he wants to. And remember, under no circumstances can this bet be called off. No, well, uh, sir. No. Well, let me count it. Wait a minute, there's only 9,000 here. 9,000? Well, I have... No, 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 it's all right, there's 10. Can't you count, T.T.? Five, six, seven... Hey, there's 11,000 here. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. Five and five or ten. That, that's that new thing they have. Put it all together. Have you got an envelope? Miss Turner, where's Miss Turner? Oh, there must be one here. Right on here. Yes, here, here's one. Fine, thank you. Will you hold that open, please? Seal it up. Here. No, I'll do it. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you Come going? Back with here. Hey, wait wait a minute. with that money. Ah. That did it. Here. Well, thanks. Did you buzz, Mr. Ralston? Yes, Miss Turner. I want you to place this envelope in the safe. You're a witness to this. Yes, Miss Turner. No one's to touch it. Not until all five of us are present. Yes, sir. A fine partnership. How many people know the combination? Now, we all understand the conditions, the absolute truth for 24 hours. OK. It's just three minutes of four. It's five minutes of four. Well, it's two minutes of four. You're all wrong. It's five after. Well, we'll find out. Three, eight, one. Oh, hello, operator. Are you there? It's automatic. When you hear the tone, the time will be 3.59 and three quarters. Set your watches, boys. It's exactly four o'clock. The bet is on. Go! The bet started at exactly 4 p.m. today and ends at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Right? Right. Oh, now, let's not gang up, fellas. When you tell your lie, pal, make it a good one. Because it's going to cost you ten grand. Now, what do we ask him? Do you think you're good looking? Yes. In a manly sort of way. You lose. Yeah. In ten seconds. No, I don't lose. That's not a lie. That's an opinion. Now, if I said you were good looking, that'd be a lie. No, well, he has a right to an opinion. Now it's my turn. When we talked of the partnership, you told me that last year you made $40,000. Is that the truth? No. Uh-huh. Well, how much did you make? Well, I think that's more of a personal question, don't you? <laughs> yeah. How uh, much did you make? $1,100. Gross. Uh-huh. All right. Now I got a butte. Where did you get that $10,000? Yeah. I asked you where you got it. 
Well, I don't think I have to answer that. I think we should change the agreement slightly. If you refuse to if answer, you lose the bet. Yeah. Well, I... I... Hello. I can... It's... A... Who, Mr. Pritchard? Uh, no, this is Steve Bennett. Quicksilver? I'll take it. He wants to buy 20,000 shares. 20,000? <laughs> what did I tell you boys? Do I know human nature? Well, what do I think of it? Well, why, it's no good. It stinks. Are you crazy? Why, you Wait, all... Uh, you... Uh, if I lay my hey, hand... Uh, <laughs> Hello, McCready? Quicksilver? Stinks. <laughs> that is one thing. But I'll get even with you for this, Bennett. I give you the news, uh, Bennett. Bennett, Bennett, Bennett you I Bennett, 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 Bennett. Why did you say that? I swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me! Stakes! <laughs> But, Hilda, are you sure? Well, then give Mr. Bennett this message. It's terribly, terribly important. Tell him that something's come up and that the... the things that I gave him to do something with, he's not to do that with them at all. And uh, that he's to hold the things, as I have to have them back right away. Now, that's clear, isn't it? But I don't think he's coming back today. They've all left for the weekend. Well, it's terribly important. I heard them say something about stopping off at Mr. Bennett's hotel first, the Miami Palms. Miami Palms? Well, wait till I get a pencil and paper. Oh, what do I need a pencil and paper for? I can remember that. Miami Palms Hotel. Thank you, Hilda. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Miami Palms Hotel. Miami Palms, Miami Palms, Miami. But, fellas, I'll see you some other weekend. I get seasick on a boat. But you accepted my invitation before the bet was made. Yeah, and remember the even tenor clause. Did you ever steal anything? Yes. What did you steal? I stole some money. Where did you steal it? From a bank. How much money was it? A half a dollar. You stole a half a dollar from a bank? Yes. What bank was it? My little brother's piggy bank. So you stole half a dollar from your little brother's piggy bank. Is that all? That's all there was in it. Good afternoon, Mr. Bennett. How are you? Hey, you live here? Yes. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I just thought that Steve lived in another hotel. <laughs> well, what's the matter with this hotel? Hey, huh? a green swan dame lives here. I'd hate to run into her now with the old man along. Oh, well, I may be crazy, but in a hotel this size, oh, you'll I, never... I remember. beg your pardon. I'm crazy. Well, hello. This is a pleasant surprise. How do you do? Yes. And Mr. Bennett, were you coming to see me? Oh, I live here. You do? Well, isn't that convenient? Yes, I was just going up. We were... Oh, well, come on. Oh, and Bruno and I were going for a walk, but we'll ride up with you. Oh, well, won't Bruno be disappointed? Nonsense. Bruno's always having his own way. Yeah, who's going to stop him? <clears throat> oh, uh, Miss, uh, I'm very bad at names. Miss, uh, Miss, uh... Graham. Oh, yes, Graham. My, uh, father-in-law, Mr. Alston. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Mr. Van Dusen. How do you do? How do you do? Miss Graham is a friend of Steve's. We met in the office. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, we met in the office, yes. <laughs> oh, why don't we have a quiet little dinner this evening and let me read you the play. Play? Putting money in a show, Steve? Uh, are you putting money in a show, Steve? Oh, I expect to come into a lot of money tomorrow. Oh, you do, eh? Uh, yeah, around 4 o'clock, to be exact. Oh, that's fine. That'll be plenty of time. Then I'll tell Charlie everything's all set, shall I? Charlie? Yes, Charlie Pendergast. He's the author. I mean, it is all set, isn't it? Charlie Pendergast? Oh, well, well, well good old Charlie. Yes. Oh, oh, you know him? No. Oh, oh you droll man. <laughs> Ninth floor. That's me. Oh, Mr. Bennett. Huh? I'm in 512. Then you'll phone me? 512. That's an easy number to remember. Goodbye, Mr. Ralston. Bye-bye, Dickie. Um, Mr. Donnelly. <laughs> These are uh, theatrical people. They certainly get familiar. I might as well get packed, fellas. Come on in. 
Hello? I'm just finishing. Say, how much do you pay for this apartment? $125 a month. Are you behind on your rent? Yes, three months. <laughs> uh, do you mind if I... Uh... I'm sorry, Mr. Bennett. I'll get right out. No, no, go right ahead with your work. Steve, did you ever tip this young lady? Did you ever try to get cute with her? Oh. Oh, now, fellas. Fellas, let's be gentlemen. Did you? Well, if you want to count that once. Well, of all things. Oh, no, no, no. Well, as you can't do it. Hello, Sam. You know, a bet's a bet, but you can't go around embarrassing me like this. We can for the next 22 hours. Huh? This is only the beginning. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bennett, I'll have to see you right away. Oh, well, come right in. Oh, oh, I'll come right out. Hey, fellas, there's a, a girl, a, a young lady. It'll only be a minute, something personal. You'll have to excuse me, it. Oh, dear. Oh, Mr. Shh. Bennett. I'm sorry about before. Oh, Mr. Bennett, the most awful thing has happened. You know I'm not good at dates. And here I thought it was the 28th, and it really is the 28th, only there isn't any more. It's February. So you'll have to give me back the money. You want me to give you back the money? Yes. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. Have you invested it already? Yes. What did you invest it in? Well, look, if you'll just wait till tomorrow, if you'll just trust me... Oh, I trust uh, you all right. It's the 10,000 I'm worried about. Yeah, me too. Because there's one terrible part about it. It isn't my money. Yeah, well, I knew it was something like that. Not your money. Well, whose is it? Everybody's. Everybody's? Well, maybe they're worried. Yes. Oh, it's Mr. Bishop. Huh? Oh, the minute I have to go for the door. Where? Where can I hide? What's the matter? Oh, that man. Here. I've never played this before. Say, tell him I'm not here. All right, I will. Sorry, no magazines. Is there a Miss Saunders here? Saunders? Yes, I must speak to her, please. Saunders? So is that Saunders with an A-U or just a plain A? With an A-U. Oh, well, I, uh, you... She's most anxious to see me. Well, why would she... Well, where is she? Where is she? Yes, where is she? Well, I think she... She's right there behind the screen. He asked me where you were. And I... Oh, I was just back there, my stocking. You know, those runs you get and the thing there. Oh, I'd like to talk to you, Mr. Bishop, but we're on our way out. We're in a hurry. On your way out? I better slip into a necktie or something. I'm... That was Mr. Bennett, my uncle's new partner. Your maid told me I might find you here. Oh, she did? <laughs> What are you so worried about? I signed the note, didn't I? And on the strength of it, we broke ground for the home. Now even the steam shovels have stopped. Well, they can't blame that on me. I merely guaranteed the $40,000. Miss Saunders, you've collected $10,000. But to date, we haven't seen a penny of it. And I must remind you, this is charity money. Charity money. Charity money. Who's he got in there? I don't know. I couldn't see her. Oh, but it's all so silly, Mr. Bishop. I have it. Or rather, I will have it. Well, yes, I'll have it tomorrow. For your own sake, Miss Saunders, as well as for ours, I can only hope you're right. The chairman insists you are all for immediately. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dick, come on, let's... Hey, I'm looking for skeletons. We'll give him two more minutes. Nothing doing. He can't have a romance on my time. Where are you going to dress it? Here's a room full of somebody. Oh, make a lot of noise. Mr. Rawson mustn't know his niece is in there. He'd ask a lot of questions. So come on, help me. Make noise. Oh, I know. This is of Dolores. <laughs> What's going on, Bennett? Yes, yes, tomorrow. You know me, Mr. Bishop. Very good, Miss Saunders. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've been waiting in that bedroom for days. Oh, come on, you can goggle on the boat. <laughs> Let's get going, Steve. We don't want to spend the weekend here. Oh, wait a minute. You'll have to go back. Don't go in. Don't. Oh, come in. <laughs> have a drink? Uh, have a cigar. 
<laughs> I, I know it looks funny, fellas, but there was a girl here that might have been embarrassing to her, you know. <laughs> Well, I, I did. Oh, Sam, Sam, yes. So what's the matter with him? You hired him. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> well, I'm all set. Get my bag, Sam. Uh, why don't we get going? Let's get out of here. Uh, we'll be out of here in a few minutes. Say, what are you shouting for? Well, I want everybody to hear me. Look what I found. Hey, <laughs> have you ever seen this before? Yes. Who does it belong to? Oh, now, fellas, there are some things. There are no you... things. Whose is it? It's mine. Yours? Yours? Well. And <laughs> 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 no woo-woos. So when do you wear it? Saturday night? I haven't <laughs> worn it for years. Quit kidding. Whose is it? Well, you're so smart, it is mine. I wore it in the varsity show. Here. It was up in Mabel's room. I was Mabel. Oh. <laughs> and no cracks. <laughs> Where are you? There. Who's that next to you? That's the villain. Did the villain catch you, Mabel? Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> what happened then? He kissed me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else at the show kiss you? Oh, do I? Uh, uh, yeah. Just a dramatic coach. At rehearsal. Oh. Oh. When did you start going with girls? <laughs> well, I... <laughs> Now, uh, go ahead. Have your fun, fellas. You're paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Gwen! Hello. Oh, here. Let me help you up. <laughs> Hello, Uncle Pudgy. I, uh, you see, I, I'm... Oh, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we were talking... Uh, you know I... <laughs> yes, yes. Say, what is this, anyway? What is she doing here? Well, it was charity. I'm, no, it wasn't that. No, it was charity. I mean, she uh, she came up and we had a little talk about some charity money. <gasps> no! Uh-oh. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, charity money? Oh, so that's it. She was trying to get some money out of you, eh? Well, I... Uh, is that true? Yes, yes, that's exactly why she came up. Yes. <laughs> then why were you hiding? Oh, uh, uh, well, I... Uh, I didn't think you'd like my asking Mr. Bennett for money. <laughs> I don't think you could get ten cents out of Steve. He's not likely to be in a generous mood. No. You see, Gwen, a couple of hours ago, he made a very bad investment. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly did. Come on, let's get started on our profitable little weekend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh! Be <laughs> Mrs. Ross, this is a wonderful idea. Splendid boat like this, very relaxing. We've been asking young Ben to bring you two over for months now. <laughs> yes, that's right, Mother. Mr. Van Dusen's always so busy. We're regular stay-at-homes. You know, my rumba is just falling apart. Uh, have a good day today, T.T.? Exceptionally good. We got hold of something very easy. Uh, we stand to make a neat little profit, Dad, and I've got a third of it. Oh, uh, was Mr. Bennett in on it, too? Well, not on the profit side. And will you establish your office here permanently, Doctor? Dear lady, there are as many diseased minds here as in Bucharest. And much more money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mrs. Van Dusen, what a perfectly sweet gown. Oh, oh, thank you, dear. Mr. Van Dusen thinks it's a little too young for me, but I always say, he can grow old. I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bennett, the cat got your tongue? You haven't said very much. And I've put you between two of my Amy's most attractive women. Don't you agree? <laughs> yes. You're right, I haven't said very much. Oh, come, my boy. This strange reticence is hardly the even tenor of your way. Oh, I'm afraid you embarrass, Mr. Bennett. And Mrs. Ralston's compliment certainly applies to Harriet, but, um... Oh, nonsense, Mrs. Van Dusen. You'd never think she was Van's mother, would you? Oh, yes, I, their eyes are very much the same. Both of them. <laughs> no, no, I mean, she doesn't look a day over a 30, does she? Oh. Whoa. Well, it, uh, you know what they say in Spanish. No. What do they say? 
Ni conono bursa de papel en la cabeza pasaría por treinta. Flatterer! Your work must be very interesting, Dr. Zarek. I mean, you must run across some strange cases. I heard of a sad case recently where a man wore a woman's nightgown. Oh, yes, that was very sad. I heard about him. It was a, uh, a black, lacy, flimsy sort of thing, wasn't it? Oh, poor fellow. He's probably a Rumpelmeyer. Rumpelmeyer? Oh, pardon me. This is our term of classification. You see, Rumpelmeyer was a famous case in Prague. Unusual fixation. He imagined he was his own grandmother. That must have been rather confusing. Yeah, especially for his grandfather. No. <laughs> but this fellow called himself Mabel. Oh, yes. Ask Mr. Bennett. He knows all about him. How interesting. Who is this Mabel? <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. You know. Tell him who Mabel is. I am. You're Mabel. Hmm? Oh, Mr. Bennett. I'm so sorry. Oh, there's nothing to be sorry about. It's ridiculous. I don't think I'm my grandmother. Well, wh whose grandmother do you think you are? Well, that's on my own. It's a costume. I wore it in a college show. I'm not Mabel. I only played Mabel. That isn't terribly funny, Pudgy. It's all in fun, Gwen. Yes, isn't it? It's awfully nice when partners can be so congenial. I'm sure Mr. Bennett enjoyed his first day with you and Dick. Didn't you, Mr. Bennett? No. No? No, it was awful. It was terrible. <laughs> T.T., you're lucky. It's rather startling to find a really honest man these days. I have some pet theories on that subject. I had occasion only last week to write an editorial on truth. Stan's father's the publisher of the Miami Journal, you know. Yes. Do you like the journal? Miami Journal? What a newspaper. Mm, I thank you very much. Do you happen to read my editorial? Yes. Uh, may I have the salt? I have salt? <laughs> the... uh, didn't you like it? Oh, I love it. I put salt on almost everything. In fact, I even put... Uh, I put salt on salt. <laughs> I hate pepper. <laughs> Steve, Mr. Van Dusen was asking if you liked his editorial on truth. Well, I liked the beginning of it. <laughs> Um, That's pretty. Uh, did, didn't you like the rest of it? I didn't read the rest of it. You mean you put the paper down without finishing my editorial? No, I, I didn't say that. I... Well, why didn't you finish it? I, I fell asleep. <gasps> <laughs> oh, oh, Steve, uh, what was that charming compliment you paid Mrs. Van Dusen a little while ago? <laughs> What cake? <laughs> Is this just made out of eggs and things like that? <laughs> you know, I had an aunt once who made the most wonderful sponge cake. And I always used to say to her, <laughs> Come on, Steve, what did you say? Uh, oh, I said, Annie, how do you ever get it to puff up so light and fluffy? <laughs> Not to your aunt. Tell us what you said to my mother. Oh, Nikon una bolsa de pat. Not in Spanish, in English. Well, I'm afraid I said that she couldn't pass for 30 even with a paper bag over her head. Well, oh. Bennett, I think you're carrying things too far. Mr. Bennett, really, you act like one of the dead end kids. And it's easily seen which end is dead. Mrs. Van Dusen, I'm not myself today. Well, whoever you are, I'm not an old paper bag. Sit down, Van. What's the matter with you, Steve? Oh, Mrs. Van Dusen, I'm saying things today that I ordinarily wouldn't say. We should weigh our words very carefully before we speak. I do. What? Mr. Bennett, I can be frank, too. I'm beginning to regret that you came here. Well, so am I. I didn't want to come. What? Well, why did you? Uh, Mrs. Ralston, I think you should ask me to leave. Oh, at once. My conduct has been disgraceful. I'll understand. I I'll leave at once. Oh, no, 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 no you're no, forgiven. No, 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 no you're no, forgiven. We, we've already uh, forgotten about it. Yeah. Well, I haven't. No, 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 no. You, you could all understand. Steve has been under a great strain. Yeah. His business failing and all the rest? Why, sure, sure, Stephen. What you said to Mother was nothing. Nothing at all. Forget it. But, Van, your own mother, an old paper bag. I think it's outrageous. Bennett, uh, I can't find words. That, sir, is the trouble with your editorial. Steve, Steve, you Mr. don't have Mr. Bennett, you hardly know us, and yet you've taken a great delight in hurting everybody's feelings. Oh, well, oh. why don't you make a good job of it? Go on, go on. Don't leave me out. I'm here. What would you like to do to me? I'd like to kiss you till your ears fly off. Oh! Easy, pal. Well, I'll say one thing for Mr. Bennett. He's different. So was Jack the Ripper. No, Van. Van. Excuse me. This young man 
He's what we call a dementia cortical with an overactive thalamic predicosis. What is that, doctor? He's a jerk. The Saunders. Miss Saunders. Go away, please. Oh, I'd like to say something. You've said enough. Oh, I I'm sorry I said all those things upstairs. All except the last. I meant that about you. I mean, you're so pretty. Uh, you're prettier than anything I've ever seen. I think... Uh... <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> Did you really mean that? Oh, I thought it was, uh... Believe me, I'm going to tell him a thing or two. Honey, you leave the telling to me. Oh, Van, you mustn't hit him or anything. You know, I think there's something wrong with him. The way he goes around saying those things that he can't possibly mean. He means them all right. But I'm not interested in him at the moment. Darling, the family is planning a Caribbean cruise, and, well, they thought it would be nice if you and I came with them. Van, you're proposing. Yeah, for the third time. That is, if I can keep track of the times. Well, I'm sorry it isn't more romantic, but... Well, I... I guess I've said all these things before. No, oh, but down in those islands... Once I get you under that Caribbean moon, I won't need words. Well, you know the kind of a fellow I am. What do you say, darling? Hmm? Darling? What was that? Well, have you seen the lady I was walking with? You were walking alone, Mr. Van Dusen. Oh, no. No, no, she was right here, right by my side. Hello. Hello. Mr. Bennett, I want to talk to you. You're the only one around here who does. I want you to know that I'm terribly upset. I mean, about the way you've been acting. Just give me one reason why you insulted everybody. Well, I had to. If I hadn't made all that trouble, there'd have been a lot more trouble. You mean, if you hadn't insulted everybody, that things would have been worse? Much worse. It'd have been bad. Gwen! Gwen! Well, where's Gwen? Oh, I don't know. Where's Bennett? Bennett? I'll find him. <laughs> He'll find him. Isn't it a wonderful, wonderful night, Mr. Bennett? I'm not mad at you anymore, you know. It's a wonderful, wonderful night. If we could only stay like this until 4 o'clock tomorrow. Mr. Bennett, do you mind if I ask you something? Very, very personal. Would you really like to? Well, it's so difficult. It certainly isn't easy. I mean, to talk about such things as love and emotions to a man you hardly know. Oh, you can tell me. Well, do you think I should marry Tommy Van Dusen? Everybody else thinks I should, but I'm mixed up, and you're so honest. I think it takes a man to know about another man. Well, I don't like to be catty, but you asked me, and I picture somebody entirely different for you. I, I mean, someone more clean cut. I mean, more dynamic, more of the American boy type. I don't see Van at all. You don't? No. <laughs> hey, look. I can see our faces in the water. Oh, it's like those funny mirrors at the amusement parks. <laughs> It's so distorted, I'm good looking. <laughs> yes. You look as if you have two heads. Well, two heads are better than one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have got two heads. But one of them isn't yours. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing right, bringing you out here. Samuel, you do lots of things you're not supposed to do for $5, wouldn't you? Yes, anybody would. 
And you'll find Steve Bennett a much more interesting case than you imagine, Doctor. I'd question him at every opportunity. Hmm. Ahoy, Flamingo! It's sometimes the people uh, that look the same as who really are... Uh, yes, Doctor. I mean, goodbye, Doctor. So long, Doctor. I think I'll do a big business in this place. Oh, the door was stuck. I had to push it like that. <laughs> well, ah, oh, brandy and candy. Isn't that dandy? Uh, Mr. Donnelly or Mr. Bennett? Yes, ma'am. Oh, it's Bennett! Say, what's going on here? Oh, foul. Oh, are you surprised? <laughs> I was in a hurry, and the door was in the I was coming in. You... That's all right. Dick made the same entrance. <laughs> One club. Pass. You two men act as if you were trying to hide from someone. <laughs> hide? You're not allowed to hide. It was clearly understood that in the... What do you mean, he's not allowed? Thomas, you're, you're all acting very strangely tonight. Uh, strangely? Well, I hadn't noticed it, my dear. Please. Please. There is a Miss Graham to see Mr. Bennett. Oh. Or Mr. Donnelly. Oh. Oh, all these people... I hope I'm not intruding. Hello, Mr. Ralston. Oh, all right, Frederick. Hello, Mr. Bennett. Uh, hello. <laughs> and how do you do, Mr. Donnelly? Uh, how, how do you do? Uh, uh, Miss Graham, this is Mrs. Donnelly, my wife. Oh, how do you do? Uh, Dr. Zarrow. Charm. Uh, Mr. Mrs. Van Dusen. How do you do? Mr. Ralston, you know, and uh, Mrs. Ralston. <laughs> Let me get you a chair, please. Oh, thank you. Uh, really, Mrs. Ralston, I'm not in the habit of barging into people's houseboats. Am I, Mr. Bennett? Oh, it's not habitual, <laughs> I guess. But after all, if there's someone you have to see who's on a houseboat... <laughs> oh, uh, uh, please do go on with your game. Uh, Mr. Bennett? Oh, Mr. Bennett? Yes? <laughs> Could I see you just a minute alone? I've got to talk to you. Yes, but, well, why don't I phone you tomorrow? Uh, say, a little after 4 o'clock. Oh, but you promised to phone me this evening. I waited and waited. Charlie's going back to New York tomorrow. Oh, he is. Well, what do you know? And it's really up to you whether I go back with him or not. Oh, well, you, you've got to go back. I, I mean, well, you, he'll be lonesome in a big city like New York and everything. <laughs> well, let's get out of here. Uh, oh, we'll go this way. Come on with your Charlie. I mean, your cards. Play, play. We... <laughs> Oh, hello. Did you hear? Charlie's going to New York. <laughs> what an extraordinary person. Who is she? Uh, look, uh, why don't you ask Steve about her? He loves to answer questions. Who is that with Steve Bennett? Who invited her aboard? That hasn't quite been settled yet. So you see, it's all a mistake. I'm no angel. I can't put money into a play, not even a good one. Oh, but The Green Swan isn't just a good play. It's a great play. Uh -huh. Just let me tell you one scene, Mr. Bennett. It's a beautiful scene. Now, you're my husband, Humphrey. Humphrey. We've just separated, but I'm still mad about you. Well, what are you and... mad about? Oh, well, oh, 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 that's just in the play. Oh. <laughs> now then, where do you suppose he took her? Darling, darling, what have I done? Why have you shut me out of your life like this? If I must, I'll beg. But at least toss me a few crumbs of your affection. <laughs> well, I've... Oh, no, no, dearest husband of mine. Husband? Take me back. Let me warm my soul at the heart of your forgiveness. Uh, but look, it's, it's no use. I'm no angel. Huh? Just let me ask you one thing. Well, honestly, Harriet, I might as well be married to the FBI. Harriet! You know the woman who came to see Mr. Bennett. It's his wife. His wife? Yes. His wife? Huh? Who's whose wife? The Bennetts. They've separated. Isn't it a shame? Yes. Dick, did you know that? Well, I, I sort of suspected it. Well, I'm not going to stand by and see two such nice people wreck their lives. Do you know what I'm going to do? No. What? I'm going to ask her to spend the night. Oh, you can't do that. What's it to you? Well, Maybe Bennett doesn't want her here. I'm sure he doesn't. I want to go to bed. You do? Yes, I'm tired. Good night, all. Come on, Angel. Come, dear. We'll ask Mrs. Bennett right now. We can put her in that cabin. So, she's his wife. No wonder Bennett's putting money in her show. Her show? Oh. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, Mr. Bennett? Mr. Bennett, now listen carefully. I want you to come to my cabin right away. But don't let anyone see you, not even anyone. Well, all right, I'll be there. And when I say I'll be there, I'll be there. <sighs> Telephone's a wonderful thing. It ain't that wonderful. Oh, now let me dream. Have you got my rope, Sam? Yes, right here, sir. Well, let me have it. I'm on my way. I wanted to pack you some extra pajamas for me. What about those striped ones I gave you last week? Was old pajamas? I thought they were underwear. Oh, Sam, why don't you retire? Just pretend that suit you're wearing is a sleeping bag. In fact, you don't have to pretend. You're home. I'm unprepared for a weekend like this. All I brought was my suntan oil. Suntan oil? You're gilding the lily. What do you want with suntan oil? I freckle. Ah, that did it. Look out. Oh, please don't bother. Nonsense, dear. These will do for you. Oh, well, you're both very sweet, Rye. Right? I really had no intention of spending the night here. Just trust us. We know about these things. There you are. Oh, thank you so much. Incidentally, Mr. Bennett's cabin is right next door. Oh, yes. The lock on that door has never worked. I must tell someone about it. Good night, dear. Good night. Good night. Good night. She's sweet. Come into my cabin a minute. My headaches. Oh. You're going, trying to give us the slip, huh? Oh, no, I wouldn't do a thing like that. that. Why would I do oh, it? Our little yeah. friend is trying to run away. Not huh? me. <laughs> Not me. Good night, boy. Frederick will fix your place to sleep. Yes. You gentlemen going to sleep four in a bed? What? Good night, Miss Betty. Good night. Don't forget to take your medicine. What's the medicine for? To build me up. Well, you better take plenty. We're going to tear you down. If I catch you within two feet of Miss Saunders, uh, how'd you like a good punch in the nose? How would you like a good punch in the nose? Yeah? Yeah. What a fight. I don't know what you hey, guys are doing. get that robe off. Yeah, I'll take it off. No, I don't want to take... No, we're going to make sure that you can't leave the boat. Yeah, why? I... Hey, what's the idea of pushing me around? Wait a minute. Don't give me that. Wait Stop a minute. Us. Come here. Come... If you'll only keep quiet. That's unfair. It's all right. Oh, now, don't be no, that no, way. No, Look out. On. That's unfair. Look out. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, I've got his clothes. Oh, leave the skin. Leave the skin. No. Oh, oh, oh. This is unconstitutional. Don't do that. Oh, don't beat it, boy. Oh, you bunch of burglars. You'll get paid. you got to get paid later in life. Oh, I tell you what. Shut up. Shut up. Now at least we'll know where to find you. Don't say a word. Nighty night. You know. Don't like I got it. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Say, uh, would you... Henchman? Oh, well. Don't bother about details. Mr. Bennett! I was just passing through. Oh. Excuse me. They locked me in, took all my clothes. Three of them, the bib. Oh. But, Mr. Bennett, you're, you're wearing that negligee. Much worse if I weren't. Shh. Stand by. 
Now you're sure you've got everything. Oh, oh Mr. Bennett. Yes, I'm just going to the Lockton house. I'm going in here. Oh, we understand. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. I'm so happy for them. Yes. Mr. Bennett. Shh. This isn't the Lincoln Highway. I wish it were. You just go ahead with whatever you're doing, hubby. Yes? Yes, I'm... I'm on my way. Yeah. You should have a motorcycle. It would slow me down. Oh, oh sorry, miss. Shh. Is everything all right? Yes, I do. Yes. Rumpelmeyer. Well, what in the world? Shh. Hello, I'm having an awful... Uh, oh, hello. Shut, close the door. I, I, I will be... Look at Annie's dressing gown. <laughs> yes, do you like... Oh, I borrowed it. I, I lost my pajamas. Well, where are they? A van took them. Uh, but Van has his own. I know, but he took them anyway. He doesn't want me running around loose. <laughs> Why don't you sit over here? Yeah. I'll fix you a nice warm cup of chocolate. Yes, I'm dressed for a thing like this. I, I can't stay very long. I have to get back. Oh, well, now, listen, I don't want you to worry about business or anything. Oh, well, I'm not worried, but they're after me. They're looking all over the boat. <laughs> oh, well, nobody's going to harm you, dear. Dear? Uh, while you're taking a sip of this nice, warm cocoa, uh -huh. I want you to think real hard and try and remember. Uh-huh. Did you put my money into a Broadway show or give it to your wife or something like that? Oh, you thought I took your money and put it at my wife? Miss Graham, well, isn't she your wife or anything? Oh, no, not even or anything. Uh -huh. Well, I wouldn't put your money in anything foolish. Well, not anything that foolish. Well, that certainly takes a load off my mind. Yes. <laughs> well, it should. I could... oh! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should wear a slip. I usually do. I don't From know. now on, whenever I think of you, I'll remember you like this. Yes, but remember, there's another side to me. Oh, I'll bet. Yeah, and I'm glad. Hey, Steve, we want to ask you. What's the matter? He's gone. Gone? But he didn't have any clothes. Where could he go? Well, where can you go on a boat? Where's that sailor? Uh-oh. Come on, quick. How do you suppose he got out the window? Dan, why is everyone prowling around? Your father can't get any rest. Well, you see, Mother, you it's didn't like... happen to see Mr. Bennett prowling around. Huh? Oh, yes. But I wouldn't disturb him. He's with a woman he loves. Uh, good night. Oh, come on. <laughs> mm, well, it should. <laughs> Well, whatever your investment is, when it comes in, Uncle has to double the whole thing. He has to double it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can see his face when he finds out I did it for you. <laughs> and I can see my face looking for another job. <laughs> <laughs> Gwen! No, 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 no. Are you all right? Gwen! We thought we heard someone in here. Why, that's silly, Pudgy. How could you hear anyone? Unless it was me uh, on the phone. Uh, or it was I. Which is it? I never can remember. We heard a man's voice. Dan, are you implying that no, I... No, I was just asking. We're not trying well, to imply I... anything. We were looking for someone. We thought we heard him in here. Yeah, a boy's laughter that could only belong to a certain party. Oh. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Well, if you don't believe me... The... Is he in there? There's just no use in discussing it any further any further at all. Now, darling, we heard a man talking. Did you? Oh, that was the radio. I was listening. You know I always listen to the radio. I couldn't sleep. Well, there was an awful lot of laughing. Yes, there was. Oh, that was Happy Jack the Fireman. Oh, his program's a scream. Wait. I'll see if it's still on. Happy Jack, Happy Jack the Fireman, Happy Jack. It's, a uh, sort of dead, isn't it? Maybe went to a fire. Uh-oh. What? Hey, what's this? What, what, what is it? Oh, it what? isn't plugged in. Oh, well, I must have pulled it out when I answered the door. Oh, that's right. Yes. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? You didn't answer the door. We came right in. Oh, well, then you must have pulled it out. Say, what goes on here? Two cups. Well, I, uh, uh, you know I always have a second cup, don't I, Pudgy? Ah, oh, Gwen. All right, all right. There is a man in the room and he's under the bed. Now, what do you think of that? Well, 
there's no one there. Well, I told you, there's nobody there. No. Say, uh, you men see anybody around here? No, sir. No one out here. We thought we'd get some bait for in the morning. You might want to go fishing. Uh, good idea. Hey, Bill, give us a hand, will you? We want to get a little bait. Okay. Hook her up. Okay, take it away, Andy. I guess we were wrong. Well, I'm good sorry. Uh, good night, my dear. Good night. Now I think I'll go to sleep. Honey, honey, I I'm really sorry. Oh, not now, Van. Good night. <laughs> I've been fishing the hard way. <laughs> oh! 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 Not only oh. a Rumpelmeyer, but also a Sitzenflügel. Oh. Oh. Good morning. Good morning, Miss. Good morning, Samuel. Oh, don't get up. Where's everybody? I'm using their bait. Nobody didn't get up yet. Oh, I see. Uh, Samuel, um, have you been with Mr. Bennett long? Oh, yes. Well, um, is anything the matter with him? Isn't he uh, peculiar? I mean, he isn't married, is he? No. He ain't that peculiar. <laughs> Thank you, Samuel. Hope you catch a whale. Yes. You all? My, aren't you chipper this morning? Well, have you ever seen such a morning? <coughs> Dutchy, Dutchy, dear, I'm going to leave you $100,000 in my will. Oh, blessings on you, Frederick. Gwen, you act just like a girl in love. Do I? Oh, pardon, Miss Gwen, but a Mr. Bishop tried to reach you on the telephone early this morning. Oh, uh... Well, if he calls again, no matter where I am, I'll be in swimming. Um, I know uh, who the other little lovebird is. The flamingo seems to work a strange magic. We have a veritable boatload of love. What do you mean, Auntie? Well, well the, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bennett are back together again. Isn't that nice? Isn't that wonderful? What? And I don't mind telling you, we deserve a little of the credit. You'll be surprised. Yes, it was a plot. We hatched it. Oh, but there is no Mrs. Bennet. He's not married. But we know differently, dear. Oh, but you can't know differently. He's just not, that's all. He told me he's not, and his man just told me to, and he's been with him for years. But we heard them talking together. Oh, well, I don't care what you heard. They're not married. She's nothing to him, nothing at all. He told me so himself. Good heavens. And on our boat. It's ghastly. What is? Mr. Bennett was in Miss Graham's room last night. We saw him go in. We were happy about it. We arranged it. Oh, my soul. Oh, Auntie. Good morning, Samuel. Good morning. You look radiant. Gainsborough should have painted you. Hmm, hello. Met him last night. So one of you ain't got pneumonia sleeping with fish. Oh, don't worry about those little things, Sam. What time is it? You got your hourglass with you? Yes.
Never mind. What day is it? On your little hand, it's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock! Not 8 or 7 or 9, but 10 o'clock. In six more hours, it'll be Christmas. Christmas? Has Mr. Roosevelt been moving them holidays around again? <laughs> Hold it, Sam. Well, hello. My dear Miss Saunders, good morning. Well, was there ever such a morning? No, never, never such a night either. Yes, fun, wasn't it? What's the matter? Well, nothing's the matter. Why don't you just go on and do whatever you were going to do? Well, I thought maybe I'd have a little coffee and sit with you. Well, why don't you have your coffee with Miss Graham, who's nothing to you? Oh, she's not up yet. Oh, I mean, why would I want to have coffee with Miss Graham? Mr. Bennett, you're a shameless and unmitigated liar. Oh, don't say that. Don't ever but say that. But you are. You lied to me. Oh, please, be quiet. Just answer one question. Were you in Miss Graham's room last night? Oh, yes, but Thanks. I... Thanks. Thank you very much. Oh, Miss Saunders, you see... Plainly! Look what came up, Miss Saunders. Oh, go soak your head. Hey, boss. Hey, boss, I got a great big... Oh, why don't you fall overboard? What a short Christmas. Linda. Go away, Dick. How would you like to make $3,333? What? And 33 cents. Go away. How about $6,666? And 66 cents? Yeah. Come in. Where? Right up the window. Oh, well, we'll fix that right up with a little oil right on there. Oh, oh that's that better. Good. Good. Oh, hello. Would you put some right here, too? Surely, then? surely. Here's a chair here, Mr. Bennett. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's all right. Don't get up. I... Is she. Yes. <laughs> Lovely morning, isn't it? Oh. I feel a little chill myself. Where's your Miss Graham? My? Oh, I don't know. She's charming. Where did you meet her? Uh, at the office. Uh, look at Van. I must remember to eat more raw meat. Mr. Bennett, you seem to have established a reputation for integrity. <laughs> Tell me, was Dick trying to hide from Miss Graham when she arrived last night? I was trying to hide. Lots of people hide. Including my husband? Here I am, Barnacle Bill, the sailor. <laughs> Sorry to be late, honey. Tried my luck off the stern. Oh, you should have seen the one that got away. <laughs> I thought she was still sleeping. Harriet, let's take a walk. This is no time this for any... This is as good a time Harriet. as any. Harriet, darling. I want to know once and for all, what is that Graham woman to you? I told you, she's nothing to me. She's Bennett's friend. Oh, she is not. She's nothing to me either. Well, I don't believe it. What were you doing in her room? I had to go through her room to get to your room. <gasps> What? Oh, that is... Then you uh, were in Gwen's room. Uh, no. Were you? Yes. What? How did you get into her room? We had your clothes. I was wearing Mrs. Ralston's dressing gown, the pink one with feathers. Feathers? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, what were you doing in my niece's room? Mr. Bennett, if you tell... If I tell, you'll be there if I could. What did you say? What? I don't chew my cabbage twice. Why did you go to her room? She asked me to and dropped that body. Gwen, I can't believe this. How dare you say such a thing? I have to. It's the truth. But this is no time for truth. Yes, it is. There's no better time. Bennett, oh, I'm going to bleed you in the Oh, don't hurt him. I only had my glasses. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, oh, what is going on here? Quiet, everybody. Van. What are you doing to my darling? Darling? Huh? What are you doing, what? my husband? I'm not your husband. I'm not anybody's husband. Oh, well, what's a husband but a name? Well, it isn't bell or book or candlelight that makes a marriage. It's what's in two hearts that really matters. Leave my heart out of this. It never met yours. I mean, it won't. All right, Steve. I'll go. I'll go my way alone. But I'll take little Stevie with me. Yeah, well, take... Little Stevie? Uh, oh, Stevie? Oh, Who's little Stevie? You're putting her up to it, Donnelly. There's no little Stevie. Oh. I, our hearts were never anything. I only met her yesterday, and you introduced me to her. Oh, take it like a man, Bennett. <laughs> oh, Harriet. Can. Oh. 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 Mr. Bennett.
and out of all the despicable things that you've done, this is the lowest. Breaking up a happily married couple, lying to save your own neck. I didn't lie. I didn't Why, lie. Why, you even tried to break us up. Yes, how about that? Van, at least, is a man of honor. He knows that I'm completely innocent. Well... Our marriage is going to be based on trust. Marriage? Yes, Ma darling, marriage. Come on, Van. But listen. Come, my dear. Oh. Three ten Biscayne building. My office hours are from two to four. Two to four. Four. Oh, Father, time. Get going. Get the lead out of your sarong. What are you doing? There's less than an hour left. Van and I are changing every clock on the boat, and we've hooked Bennett's watch. Well, what's the idea? Well, he'll think the bet's over ahead of time. Start lying, and we'll have him. Oh. <laughs> That's the best idea you've had. <laughs> In fact, it's the first idea you've had. Where can I find Miss Saunders? On the upper deck, sir. You can just wait here. I'll be here. Well, maybe you're right. I don't... Mr. Bennett! Mr. Bennett! It's Mr. Bishop. Who? Mr. Bishop, and I don't want to see him. What? The only reason I'm talking to you is because I don't want to talk to him. You see him. Huh? You promised me you'd have those green things by now. Well, it's almost 4 o'clock. Yeah, but why are you... What green things? Oh, well, you know, green things. What green things are you going to get at 4 o'clock? And no evasions. Here you are, Mr. Bishop. Uh, 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 oh, oh, Mr. Bishop. Well, hello. Uh, Mr. Bishop, meet Mr. Donnelly. How Mr. Donnelly, do? Mr. Bishop. Uh, Mr. Bishop, where, uh, where is Miss Saunders? Miss Saunders, where the... Yes, with an AU. Where is she? Well, she's right over Oh, she there, went yeah. that way. <laughs> how far? Oh, not far. Well, how far? Well, distance is only a question of relativity, as Einstein said. Now... You take the caterpillar. Hey, cut that uh, off. From here to where Miss Saunders is would be about 20 miles to a caterpillar. You, yeah, of course, with you, it's different. You're no caterpillar. You wouldn't be wearing a double-breasted suit, and that's nice, too. Young man, I, I, young man, I think you're a lunatic. Uh, What's going on here? Oh, oh Mr. Van Dusen, Mr. Bishop. Uh, Mr. Bishop, Mr. Hey, Donnelly. T. T. Mr. Uh, Van Dusen. Uh, uh, Mr. Ralston. Uh, Mr. Stop Bishop. It. Stop it. Uh, Mr. D Bennett, are you trying to waste time? Yes. Mr. Ralston, you are Miss Saunders' uncle? Yes. Mr. Rawson, I am chairman of the collection committee for the Seaside Home. Your niece signed a note guaranteeing $40,000, none of which we have received. She has already collected $10,000, and she has been avoiding me and refuses to divulge what she did with these charity funds. I'm afraid the committee is all for referring the matter to the police. Oh, you mean she can go to jail? She most certainly can. 10000 Those green things. Anderson Stevens. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Come here. Come on, fellas. Don't let Mr. Bennett move from this spot. Will you excuse us, Mr. Bishop? Mr. Rawson, I have no time. We have even less. We'll be right back. Come on. 
Come in here. Let's get away from that door. Ten thousand. That's Gwen's money. Why, of course. Yeah, she gave Bennett the money and he bet it. Well, that's why they were together so much. Hey, that's why he went to her room. Oh, I promised to double it. If he wins, gee, who's will cost me 20,000 more? Oh, wait. He's trapped. We got him. What? We'll get Bishop to ask him what he did with Gwen's money. That's right. He can't answer without either lying or divulging the bet. Hey, we've got him red-handed. <laughs> Come on. <Yeah. laughs> Anderson, Stevens, escort Mr. Bennett into the living room. Oh, mm -hmm. now, what is this? Wait a minute. Mr. Bishop, that man has your $10,000. Yes. Miss Saunders gave it to him. To him, that lunatic is a madman. Now, you do just as we say. You ask him what he did with it. Yes, keep yes. asking. Don't let up. No. Just keep asking. No, just, just keep asking. Ask, ask him what he did. You trust me. Wait a minute. This is a free boat, isn't it? Sorry, sir. Orders. Don't get so physical. I got a brother who's a Marine. All right, go sir. ahead and ask him. Young man, I understand you have my $10,000. Oh, Mr. Bishop, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Bishop, Mr. Stevens. We're sailors. Uh, oh, uh, Dr. Zarek, uh, Mr. Bishop. Uh, Mr. Ralston, Dr. Zarek. We've met. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Donnelly, Mr. Bishop. Yeah, but uh, uh, Dr. Zarek, meet the Navy. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bishop, uh, answer uh, my question. Did Miss Saunders give you $10,000? Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, uh, she came, uh, she... Uh... Hello there. Hello, oh. Uncle. And Mr. Bishop, why, you look splendid. And such rosy cheeks. Have you been yachting, doesn't Miss he? Miss Saunders, don't ask her, ask him. Yes. Mr. Bennett, did Miss Saunders give you $10,000? Uh... And, Mr. Bennett, you're going to get the first piece. Thanks. Miss Saunders. Dr. Zarek, that huh? wonderful book. Mr. Bishop, have you seen this book yet? I could hardly put it down. Hey, right, Bishop, uh, answer Mr. Bishop's question. What are you? What did you say? Where is that $10,000? <laughs> Where is the $10,000 Miss Saunders gave you? What time is it? Tea time. Tea, everybody. It's almost 4 o'clock. Tea, tea for tea, tea. We don't want Take that stuff away from him. I'll serve yours myself, Mr. Bishop. I demand to know what he did with that. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry, that's too bad. <laughs> I'm all right. I want to know what oh, you did Mr. with Mr. Bishop, did you meet Mrs. Rawson, Mrs. Van Dusen, Mr. Van Dusen, Mr. Bishop? Is that a madhouse? <laughs> Practically. Perhaps I can be of some help. Shut up. I beg your pardon. He's my guest. Answer the question. Sit down. What did you do with the $10,000 you got from Gwen? Sit Samuel, it's tea time. One oh, lump or two. Look, two lumps of lemon in mine, please. What did you say? I'll just take a cookie. Cookie? Come on, now. This is not fun. I don't it. want any Oh, yes, you do. I... Crumpets? <laughs> Pancakes or what? Pancakes. Crumpets are no profits. Either you'll answer my question or I'll send for the police and charge this girl with embezzling charity money. This can hardly be kept out of the newspapers. Well, it'll certainly be in my paper. Well, you wouldn't print that. This is news. Business is business, and news is my business. Bennett, I think I'll find words this time that'll keep you awake. Come on, tell us the truth. What did you do with Gwen's $10,000? Oh, do you really want to know? I must know. And you want him to know what I did with the money? Yes. And you want him to know? Yes. 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 Answer him. Well, if you all really want to know what I did with the $10,000... Yes? Ask Mr. Ralston. Uh, me? No, no, I don't know. Fibber, how do you like it? Well, ask Van. I don't know. Well, ask Dick. No, no, I have no idea. Steve. This is a very serious matter. I insist that you answer him now. Or forfeit. Uh -huh. Look who's here. Oh, the ladies. <laughs> Hello, ladies. What is this? Answer that question. Oh, I'll answer the phone. It didn't ring. Well, let's not wait till the last minute. What did you do with the money? Well, the uh, first thing I did was count it. Then what did you do? Well, then I, I put it in an envelope. Then what did you do? Uh, uh, who, me? Yes, yes. Oh, I... Uh, hurry, hurry. Well, then I invested it. In what? Oh, and a wonderful common stock that doubled itself all double in 24 hours. <laughs> no, you didn't. You lose. I do not. I win. You lose. <laughs> what you just said makes you lose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's after 4 o'clock. No, oh, it isn't. Oh, no. It's only a quarter of 4 now. We moved the clock ahead. Yes, but I set it back. Uh -huh. I set it ahead. Yeah. Again? Mm -hmm. That's illegal. No, oh, no. <laughs> There's nothing in the bed against that. All right, boys. Will someone tell me what this is all about immediately? I'm sorry, old boy. Tough luck, old boy. Tough luck, old boy. Tough luck, yes, sir. <laughs> I lose. I've lost. Oh. Oh. 
I guess it's my fault, boss. I didn't know I was doing nothing fooling with the clock. Oh, well, never mind, sir. <laughs> What'd you say? I say I come in here a while ago and I seen by my watch that the clock was wrong. So I moved it back 15 minutes. When it comes to watches, I'm a stinkler for details. Oh, Sam, you oh, oh, then that's the right time. Well, thanks, fellas. <laughs> hey, my condolences. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Better luck next time. Thank you. I didn't know I was doing nothing wrong. Now, wait a minute. How do we Pachi, know that? Wow. Listen. Huh? When you hear the tone, the time will be three minutes after four. Did you hear the tone, Pudgy? Yeah. Samuel, I'm going to buy you a platinum watch. In the meantime, you can give me your old one. Yes. It belongs to you anyway. <laughs> Mr. Bennett, would you be good enough to explain? Oh, yes, I will. You see, I bet that... Oh, won't you sit down? I bet them $10,000 of Gwen's charity money that I could... Yes. That I could lie for 24 hours. <laughs> it's a silly bet, but now that I've won, it's going to be such a relief to tell the truth. Oh, Mrs. Donnelly... Dick never knew Linda. He didn't? No, that was my biggest whopper. She's an old friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Went to Miami High together. Oh, Dick, have I? Well, you certainly have. Oh, Dick. And Linda, old girl, I'm personally going to see that someone gives you the money for your show. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Mrs. Ralston. Oh, I just can't wait to tell Charlie. Goodbye. <laughs> She's crazy about Charlie. <laughs> Bennett? You were not lying. Huh? I'm not as gullible as those fellas, you know. What was that stock you bought? Oh, well, uh... uh could it have been lost Lomas Quicksilver? Uh, come on, come on. You can't leave me out of a good thing, you know. Oh, well, it's T.T.'s personal. Uh, what about it, T.T.? Hmm, Van Dusen, it's highly speculative. I can afford to take a flyer if you can. Come on outside. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Why, T.T., this is 2-2. Two -two. Now, you see, Mr. Bishop, you've been worrying about nothing, nothing at all. Mr. Bennett has the $20,000. Uncle's going to double it. That makes 30. No, I mean 40, you see? Oh, well. <laughs> and as for you, Mr. Bennett, may I see you outside for a minute? Oh, you bet. Mr. Bennett, may I? Oh, Mrs. Van Dusen, you know what I said about you? Yes. Well, I didn't mean that. You look about 18. Oh. Well, 28, even on a clear day. No, flatterer. <laughs> yes. There, you see, dear? And Van... You know what I said about you? I meant that. So, you made a bet to lie for 24 hours. That's the truth. Oh, well, then you didn't mean it when you said you'd like to kiss me. Well, I'll tell you a bigger lie than that. What? I don't love you, and I don't think I could kiss you till your ears fly off. Well, there's no harm in trying. No, there isn't. Not only a Sitzenflugel, but also a Wolfenschnitz. Oh.